We'll come to an example on how to use an integrating factor to form an exact differential equation. Looking at the given differential equation, it appears as if it might be an exact differential equation, but remember, it's only exact if the partial of m with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x, where m is equal to cosine x divided by y squared plus one divided by y, which we can also write as y to the power of negative two cosine x plus y to the power of negative one, and n is equal to x divided by y squared, which we can also write as x y to the power of negative two. So we want to begin by determining whether the given differential equation is exact or not. So the partial of m with respect to y is equal to the derivative of y to the power of negative two cosine x plus y to the power of negative one with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us negative two y to the power of negative three cosine x minus y to the power of negative two. And the partial of n with respect to x is equal to the derivative of x y to the power of negative two with respect to x, treating y as a constant, which gives us y to the power of negative two. The partial of n with respect to y does not equal the partial of n with respect to x, and therefore we don't have an exact differential equation. So now we'll proceed and see if we can find an integrating factor to make the given differential equation exact. Any solution to the new equation is also a solution to the given equation. To do this, we'll begin by determining the difference of the partial of n with respect to y and the partial of n with respect to x, which is equal to negative two y to the power of negative three cosine x minus y to the power of negative two minus y to the power of negative two, which gives us minus two y to the power of negative two. And from here, we divide by n if we think dividing by n will give us a function of only x, and we divide by m if we think the quotient will give us a function of only y. Let's go and divide by m. If this doesn't work, we'll come back and divide by n. Dividing by m, we divide by y to the power of negative two cosine x, and then plus y to the power of negative one. To begin simplifying this quotient, let's eliminate the negative exponents by multiplying the numerator and denominator by y cubed, because we have y to the power of negative three in the numerator. In the numerator, we now have negative two cosine x minus two y. In the denominator, we have y cosine x plus y squared. And now let's factor the numerator and denominator. We'll factor negative two from the numerator, which gives us negative two times the quantity cosine x plus y. And we'll factor y from the denominator which gives us y times the quantity cosine x plus y. This is good news, notice how this simplifies. Because we have a function of only y now, we call this q of y. So we now know that q of y is equal to negative two divided by y, and the integrating factor is u of y, which is equal to e to the power of the opposite of the integral of q of y dy. So now we know u of y is equal to e to the power of the opposite of the integral of q of y dy, which is negative two divided by y dy. Simplifying, we have e to the power of the integral of two divided by y dy, which gives us u of y equals e to the power of two natural log absolute value of y. We'll include the plus c later. This is equal to e to the power of natural log y squared, we can drop the absolute value because we have y squared as the input, which just gives us y squared. So now we're gonna multiply both sides of the original equation by y squared. Multiplying the right side by y squared, we still have zero. And now let's go ahead and simplify. We have cosine x, plus y times dx plus x dy equals zero. And now we should have an exact differential equation. Let's continue on the next slide. Let's first check for exactness, where m is now equal to cosine x plus y, and n is equal to x. The partial of m with respect to y 
is equal to zero plus one or one, and the partial of n with respect to x is equal to one. So now we know we have an exact differential equation, and any solution to this equation is also a solution to the original differential equation, where the solution is big F equals C, such that the partial of big F with respect to x equals m, and the partial of big F with respect to y equals n. From here we can integrate both sides of the first equation with respect to x, or integrate both sides of the second equation with respect to y. Let's integrate both sides of the first equation with respect to x, which gives us big F of x comma y is equal to, now when we integrate the right side, because we integrated the partial of f with respect to x to find big F, we won't have just plus c for a constant of integration, we'll have plus a function of y, which we'll call a of y. So big F is equal to the integral of m with respect to x, where m is cosine x plus y dx, which gives us big F of x comma y is equal to sine x plus xy, again, plus a function of y. We have to have plus a function of y here again because we integrated the partial of f with respect to x to determine big F, and recall to find the partial of big F with respect to x, we treated y as a constant, and therefore when we integrate with respect to x, we don't recover the part that was a function of y. And now we can determine a of y using the second equation, the partial of big F with respect to y equals n. And the partial of big F with respect to y is equal to the derivative of sine x plus xy plus a of y with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us x plus a prime of y. And this must equal n, where n is equal to x. Well, if n is equal to x, a prime of y must equal zero. And if a prime of y is equal to zero, we could integrate both sides of the equation with respect to y to recover a of y, but if the derivative is equal to zero, we should be able to recognize that a of y is equal to some constant, which we'll call c sub one. So now we know the potential function, big F of x comma y is equal to sine x plus xy plus a of y, which is some constant, which we'll call c sub one. And the general solution is big F equals a constant c. So the general solution is sine x plus xy plus c sub one equals some constant we'll call c sub two. If we subtract c sub one on both sides, we'll let c sub two minus c sub one be equal to c, giving us sine x plus xy equals c. This is the implicit form of the general solution. Let's go ahead and solve for y. Let's subtract sine x on both sides, which gives us xy is equal to c minus sine x. And then we'll divide both sides by x which gives us y equals the quantity c minus sine x divided by x for the general solution. I hope you found this helpful.